Good morning, Glory America. Bonjour. Hi, Canada. I'm Hugh Hewitt back inside the Beltway. John Elliott was deputy assistant to President Trump for many years, the NSC spokesperson as well for a couple of years, worked closely with O'Brien and everybody over there. John Elliott joins me now. Good morning, John. How are you? Hey, good morning, Hugh. I'm doing great. Great to be on your program. Best in the best in the country. Thank you, sir. I like the fact that you're paying attention to where John Kerry was. A lot of folks ignored this, but you didn't, and it's over at townhall.com. Uh, explain to people where John Kerry ended up in the middle, as China engages in genocide, where John Kerry went. So this is the first administration, first senior administration official to actually touch down in China. And, um, you know, we're engaged in a great power competition, as uh, Victoria and Lynn had early on, on your program. And we are in the middle of the coronavirus that they unleashed on the world with uh, close to 3 million deaths worldwide and 560,000 plus deaths tragically here in the U.S. And uh, so Kerry touches down to discuss, just wait for it, climate change. Can you imagine that? I mean, uh, unbelievable. You have this, uh, um, no matter what your views are on the science behind climate change, and there was a great piece in the Wall Street Journal uh, by Holman Jenkins who outlines the last two decades of uh, questioning that, uh, uh, but questioning the whole idea of the um, of the uh, uh, climate uh, crisis, if you will, or climate change crisis, even if that were a true priority and it would have to rank something like 90th on our on our list, uh, why would you go, to, why would the Biden administration send its first official to touch down there with everything that's going on with China, uh, coronavirus, South China Sea, uh, Suga and Biden were just meeting with that and they had a, uh, Suga had a strong statement last week so we're not talking to them about uh, South China Sea. We're not talking to them about the coronavirus and what they plan to, uh, how they plan to compensate the world for unleashing this on us. Instead, we send somebody to go talk climate change. The Chinese Communist Party officials are just laughing behind their backs. Uh, well, that we, that John Elliott is right. We have three external problems with China that are pressing. There are threats to Taiwan, as evidenced by invasion of their airspace. Their continued menacing of the Senkaku Islands, which belong to Japan. And until last week, they had amassed an armada of blue holes. Uh, those are those unofficial, the, 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 the naval equivalent to little green men at Whitson Reef, which they have withdrawn as the Teddy Roosevelt got close. Those were all external aggressions. That's in addition to espionage and foreign influence operations. But to go to the to Beijing, and or was he in Shanghai, John? I think he was in Shanghai. He was Shanghai, exactly. Right. Yeah. For, but for John Kerry, first person to go to China, we send the climate czar. It's a total inversion of priority, unless it's their real priority, in which case we're in real trouble. Exactly. No question about it. It's just so tone deaf, and this isn't the this isn't the first time that uh, this administration, and we're barely three months into the administration, not quite. And they had uh, really an embarrassing exchange with the Chinese, with Tony Blinken and Jake Sullivan in Anchorage last month, where they allowed themselves to be lectured for something like 17 minutes by the Chinese officials, Chinese Communist Party officials, about our Black Lives Matter and our racism in this country. And so what you have is, is there couldn't be more of a contrast between President Trump and how he dealt with the Chinese and how they knew that he meant business he put sanctions on them. He got uh, the first phase of a trade deal. There would have been a second trade deal had there been a second term. There might be in, in 2024 and, and going forward when we get some serious leadership back in here. But it is just so tone deaf. So not only do we have one story out from Anchorage from last month with, where we allowed ourselves to be lectured, but now here we go and we say our number one priority, our top uh, official that we're going to send in there, the first one we're going to send in there is going to talk on climate change. It's just really embarrassing. Now, now, John, I traveled with John Bolton when he was the NSC advisor, and uh, the Turks, who had a very tense meeting with him, nevertheless did not engage in public disparagement of the NSC advisor. I did not go anywhere with O'Brien because he was a friend. You work for Robert O'Brien. Did anyone ever chew out Robert O'Brien the way that Yang uh, the senior diplomat from China chewed out Jake Sullivan and, as you said, the Secretary of State. Did that happen ever in your two years at NSC? That absolutely never happened. And if it did happen, Robert O'Brien is such a strong leader that he would have given it right back and pushed back on this. But because we're in this woke climate with the Black Lives Matter and everything from the last year, 
and also what's happening down in Georgia right now. So you have the administration that's towing the line and cannot push back because that would be against what it is said are priorities in terms of dealing with racial inequity in this country and racism. And so they just allowed themselves to be lectured by the communist Chinese. Meantime, the Chinese are uh, committing genocide against the Uyghurs. And so we're allowing them to lecture us on this. I mean, it was really embarrassing. One other thing I should point out, Hugh, is that with John Kerry, everybody remembers, maybe they, maybe they don't, it's been about 16 years, 17 years almost, uh, where he had this really embarrassing uh, event with the, um, the troops in, in uh, Iraq, where he essentially said that, hey, he was talking to some school, school students, and he said, hey, if you don't study hard, then you're going to end up in Iraq, and you'll be ending up like these poor souls who, who have nothing to do in their lives but go to Iraq. He was forced to apologize. I was in the middle of the campaign uh, season in, in 2004 when he was the Democratic Party candidate. So not only does he make the wrong move with China and Biden signals weakness by sending him over to talk climate, but this is somebody himself who's stepped in it several times. And so if anybody's going to be sent over there, it should be somebody strong, but maybe there's nobody on the bench. Now, John, I'm the only person in America that's read John Kerry's uh, memoir because he was a guest and we had a very good conversation about his secretary of state years. I'm just curious, given that you are a veteran uh, national security appointee in Republican administrations, what is the what is the message to everyone in the executive branch on Team Biden about the status of John Kerry when, if as reported, he has an office in the West Wing at state and at DOD and he's the first person to go to China uh, I, I mean, doesn't everyone assume that he is senior to Blinken? Well, it, the optics are terrible for, for Blinken and for Jake Sullivan. I mean, to have Kerry have an office in the West Wing and be able to essentially walk in and talk to Biden at any time. I mean, look, there's when, you, when you're selecting personnel for an administration, there's some time where, where you say, great, we have people from our party, uh, Republican or Democrat, who have – uh, had their time in the sun. They've had a great career. Uh, they've been, uh, rather than bringing somebody in, it would just be like a minister without portfolio, essentially, to be over at state, to be in the West Wing and be able to just bend Biden's ear on anything. Uh, if you were Biden and if you were Ron Klain, I think it would be, it would have been time to just say, hey, look, Kerry, nice guy, somebody that, uh, that had a distinguished career in many ways, but uh, we're just not going to have this minister without portfolio who has the potential, at least the optics, of undermining the real national security team. Now, I've been looking for reporting. You're one of the very few people that wrote about this, John Elliott. It's over at townhall.com. I'm looking for some reporting on who signed off on the China trip, because this is obviously an important trip uh, for John Kerry to go to, uh, to Shanghai. It's the first trip of a senior American official to go to the People's Republic of China during a period of increased tension and aggression in the South China Sea. Did you see any reporting on who cleared this? Did Blinken clear it? Did Jake Sullivan clear it? Did the pre Or did John Kerry just go? I think he just went. I think he just informed Blinken and Sullivan said, hey, I'm, I'm going to be heading out here. Obviously, he got military aircraft to fly him in there. But the bottom line is that uh, John Kerry can do what he wants. And so that's something that's very problematic if you're Tony Blinken, if you're Jake Sullivan. I know that Mike Pompeo and Robert O'Brien would never have allowed a, uh, uh, somebody who's a senior person to just have his own portfolio and be able to travel around as a Secretary of State plus to just talk on uh, and, and to be the first person to go in there, just really tone deaf. So That's a good term, Secretary of State plus. Last question, John Elliott. Uh, you dealt with the press who covers national security for a long time. Who covers Kerry? Is it the EPA press, the State Department press, the DOD press, the White House press corps? Who's on Kerry's trail? <laughs> I'm not sure that I, I'm not aware of anybody that he brought on the trip, but all the top White House reporters and State Department reporters cover what he does because obviously he has a he has a big portfolio. But I'm I'm not sure who actually number one who signed off on and number two uh, who actually covers him. But he's covered extensively by the White House press corps and by the foreign press corps when he does a big trip like this. It was it was it, widely it, reported. In reality, is he deputy president? In reality, he is once again minister without portfolio who can step in at any point and uh, weigh in on not only climate change, but just about everything else that is uh, 
that is uh, front of mind for him, has walk-in authority with, with the president. And if I'm Ron Klain and if I were, uh, if I were uh, President-elect Biden, I would have made the call to say thanks, but no thanks, John Kerry. John Elliott, former NSC spokesperson, deputy assistant to President Trump. Thank you, John. The piece is at townhall.com. I've tweeted it out. Stay tuned, America. I'll be right back. We've got Josh Kroshauer coming up a little bit later. And your phone calls at 1-800-520-1234. Does having John Kerry in Shanghai make you feel comfortable? 1-800-520-1234. Connection to The Hugh Hewitt Show.